Yes, indeed. We've seen him work in others, and we want him to work in us. And that's what evangelism basically is all about. Evangelism is a zealous advocacy of a cause. And it also says that the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witnessing. And we have with us this morning, oh, our scripture, by the way, is Ephesians 4. 11 and 12, which says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So basically, evangelists are people that uh, advocate Christianity and also the way I look at it, it's the, the way of life of a Christian. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I agree. Uh huh. So that was Ephesians four and eleven. Mm -hmm. So let me just move on and introduce our guests. Um, we have in studio. First, we have uh, Sister Elizabeth Graham. Good morning, Sister Elizabeth. Good morning. Oh. Good morning to you all out in Radio Land. Okay. I come greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am Evangelist Elizabeth Marjorie Graham. I am a part of the ministry. Nine years to make nine years the end of this month. Nice. I was ordained four years ago as an evangelist. Beautiful. And that is the office on an evangelist. Amen. I work along with children ministry. I, I am a prayer warrior. And I make myself available to be used in whatever area or whatever I am called to do in the ministry. Amen. And the ministry is Mireille's ministry. Yes. And Victoria the ministry Street. is Mireille's Ministries uh -huh. International. International. Oh, absolutely. All right. Okay, well, thank you for that introduction. And also we have with us uh, Miss Erin Gabriel. Good morning, Erin. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erin Gabriel, the youth minister at Marais Ministry International also, under the leadership of Apostle Dr. Suzette Messiah. And I work with the youths every Fridays, and I also am a worship leader. So I was ordained three years ago as a youth minister. Amen. See, I found out something that I didn't know this morning. They both are ordained. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Are you ordained? It's a process. Uh, uh, hopefully. Oh, you're a work in process? Yeah. A work, uh, in, a work process. in progress. A work in progress. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, let's get started. Um, and either one of you can, can speak on this. Um, what is, no, why do you, or why is there a need to evangelize? A need to evangelize. You know, when you go out, to evangelize you go out and you tell people you tell them because some people don't even know who Jesus Christ is so you go out and you give them the good news of Christ and what he can do how he can make a difference in their life by sharing you tell them what the word of God said or what Jesus spoke so that's the work when you go out to evangelize you give them the message of salvation to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are many desperate souls and many lost souls mm -hmm. out there, especially in our nation. As we can look around, there are so many thing hap things happening. People fall in depression. People, they're facing a lot of challenges and they don't have hope. So whenever we go out and evangelize, there are people who doesn't even know about Jesus, like Evangelist Betty said. And they need that hope to know that God is real and to know that he loves us and that he died for us and that Jesus died for us so we can have that connection with our Father who is in heaven. And we believe that the good news needs to be spread, especially for those who are on their brink of suicidal. What if one day there is somebody who 
which in I actually heard a story about this, who is on the brink of being suicidal. And one little boy went up to that lady and gave her a pamphlet. And because of that pamphlet, telling that lady that Jesus loves her, she actually rethink her decision of being suicidal. And she gave her life to Christ. And two weeks after, she went to the same church that the boy went to because of the pamphlet having the address on it. And she gave her life to Christ. So I believe evangelists have a very important role in bringing the good news to other people. And it's really needed for broken and lost souls, like I mentioned earlier. And, and you know, you might ask, who should we go to? We should go, as the Bible said, the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel mm -hmm. of salvation. Because you go to anyone. You go to anyone and tell them the good news of salvation of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ did when he died on the cross for, for all of our sins. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I was listening to a teaching, as he said, you don't go to anyone special. You follow the leading of the Holy Spirit that is within you. And you can, because sometimes there are some people really need, as Erin would say, to hear that message of salvation. You know, so you go, you don't have to go to, you go to your neighbor, you can use your neighbor. You can use a friend. You can go to a stranger. You can go to anyone, anyone you, you see Amen. around that, that your spirit lead you to. You go and share the good news of salvation. Because some people are just waiting, waiting for you to tell them about Jesus Christ and who he is and what he did for all of humanity. Okay, amen. Okay, um, Brandon. Yes. Let, let us hear from you a little bit, because I know that you are part of the youth ministry also at Marais Ministry, uh, Marais International. So yes, um, yes. tell me um, what you feel about uh, being an evangelist. I, I totally, first of all, I'm totally in agreement with um, what Aaron and Evangelist Graham and Evangelist Aaron is stating this morning. There are people out there, they need us. They need to hear that word. They're waiting for that word. And like the, the scripture says in uh, Romans 10 and verse 14, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How then can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how then can they hear without someone preaching to them? Mm -hmm. This means that someone has to go out there. Someone has to be that voice in the desert places. Because there are people out there, they might be in Belize City, but they feel like they're in a desert. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, spiritually, they feel like they're in a desert. Mm -hmm. And they feel like there is no hope left they feel it's for some of them they're probably on their last day mm -hmm. they feel like there's nothing left and when you go out there to them and reach you to them you are that word of hope you can be that word mm -hmm. you can bring that word that can bring them back from zero to a hundred percent okay so let me ask all of you um when you go to evangelize mm -hmm. and you go to the public you hit the street so to speak yeah okay and then you meet a person on the street so what how do you approach that person what is it that you would say to them how will you know that salvation is what they're looking for how do you explain to them in in a short period of time that you're evangelizing because that person has to let you in first let you into their space is that right yes Okay, so that person allows you in their space, mm -hmm. and when you're in their space, then you have to capture their attention some kind of way so mm -hmm. that they're really paying attention to what you're saying to them, right? So w what do you use as a method? Um, let's start with uh, Sister Betty, 
and and then we'll go to Aaron and then uh, Brandon because we're finding that we always have to have the male view of point and because Brandon and Aaron are uh, in what you call the youth age age of youth then um, it's always good for us to put out there how you feel you know what you feel about it because um, one of the things that I understand about being an evangelist you have to live the life that you're talking about mm -hmm. and if you are not um, showing uh, or being a Christ person yes, okay yes. or leading a Christian life yes. then how do you talk about being a good Christian mm -hmm. so uh, let's start with um, sister Betty and uh, let us know what it is that you do when you um, go evangelize Now I know sometimes you all go to the hospital and that's a that's a captured audience you know they yeah. they're, they're there <laughs> they can't go anywhere you know mm -hmm. and of course they are in a situation of healing needing healing and evangelism um, sometimes will heal a person that's what brings them uh, into the fold right uh, amen okay so uh, sister Betty Tell, tell us how you... First, you you know, whatever time of the day you go, mm -hmm. you can tell them, you know, say, good morning or good afternoon. And you engage in a conversation of getting to know who that individual is. Whoever it is, it's a man or a woman, you get to know who they are. You have a, a discussion with them and you know more or less where you start and when you listen to the story that's the time when you can enter when you can start talking about the message of jesus christ and salvation and the hope they have they can receive through jesus christ because you don't want to lose as you said that fruit you got to know how to use tact. Tact when you're when you're talking. When you're talking, okay, when you're talking because you do not want to bruise that fruit. Mm -hmm. So you get to know. You go in and you talk nicely and introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, tell them who you are, and you have a, con a normal conversation with them, getting to know them. Then you know where to go in. Um, Aaron, for me, um, I've noticed it because um, I've noticed that a lot of people, when you're going through like some dark times, some hurtful times, some of them want to close up. Some of them will be open and some mm -hmm. of them will just reject you completely. Mm -hmm. But I realize that when you go to people, you try to be on their level. Try to think the way that they will think. Don't yes. let them feel that you're better than them in any way. Absolutely. Like, you're not going to throw your um, accolades if you have accolades or if, if they know you as this minister or this evangelist, this apostle. I don't like people to address me by those names because it's just a name. But um, it's really good to get at their level. So when they're at their level, um, at when I'm at the level with them, as Miss Betty said, that you will get to know who they are. Talk a little about about you i love to share my testimony with other people especially if i can identify with them what they're going through mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it had to be someone who ministered to me so i can come to the lord so i share that story with them let them know that it's okay to speak and if they don't want to speak it's okay but what i like to remind them of god's word that's why it's very important to know god's word and the simple verse that a lot of people know john three sixteen, mm -hmm. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes that in him shall not perish but have everlasting life amen basically focusing on how much god loves them so that's the first thing we're going to tell them god loves you and so do i i don't know you as much but i want to assure you that god loves you if no one have ever told you that just know that you have someone who loves you and who cares so just getting to their level will let them know that you know what maybe I can open up a bit and then I share the word of hope with them who Christ is what he have done for them and what they can do to reconcile back to him you and, know and yeah. as Erin Erin was saying 
Yes, they don't have to know you. They don't have to know me as an evangelist. Most people know me as nurse because I am a nurse. You know, and they will talk with me and they will share their story and I will listen to them, you know. And that's the time when you can start talking to them about Jesus Christ. Or as Erin said, you give a story because I can give my story because my story is that I am a walking, living testimony of miracle healing of what God can do in my life. He can do it in their life too. Let us hear your testimony, if you don't mind. Yes, yes. My, t my testimony, early in the year, in the month of March, early March, I had a stroke. I had a stroke. And I was almost at the point of near death. But thanks to my spiritual mother and prayers, Dr. Apostle Susan Messiah, you know, the door was open and God answered that prayer. And he gave me a miracle healing. That's why I can sit here today and speak because of the goodness and the mercy and the grace of what God can do in your life. Because if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. That's Amen. right. And you know, that's the lesson. That, that what you just said, if he can do it for me, he can, he can do, do it, do for, it you. for you. Like the song was saying, mm -hmm. if he can, whatever he did for you, he can do for me. And, yes. and um, I know that Aaron has a testimony and so does Brandon. And they are living examples of, you know, two young people as to, you know, okay, yeah, I used to do this and I was there and I, you know, but now because I am a believer and I have been saved, this is the direction that I'm going. Erin, um, you want to uh, share a testimony with us also? For me, well, as mentioned before, um, I used to do a lot of things that I believe God will never approve of. I loved gambling, cursing out of the, cursing out the elderly. I didn't have respect for the adults. Um, I did what I wanted at a very young age. And I remember going to Marais ministry and as evangelist said, I met Dr. Apostle Susan Messiah. I never heard that I was loved by my parents a lot. So when she told me, she looked in my eyes and she said, you're beautiful and that you're loved. I started to cry because that was profound to me. Then I knew how beautiful I was and how God created me to be a special individual. Just hearing that I'm loved allowed me to move on and to know that, you know what, I have hope in this world. And Amen. from the age of 12, mm -hmm. um, I started to come to church, um, but I still gamble, I still curse, Amen. I still... Um, they dirty dancing back then and apostle she did an altar call I went to service a Sunday and I accepted the Lord at age 12 but I didn't serve him fully I didn't come to that place of full surrender uh, it took some while but God worked on me and she used to say that you're going to be an intercessor you're going to be preaching God's word and I would look at her as if do you know what you're talking about but she actually did saw that before I did. And at the age of 13, I preached for the first time. And it was amazing to speak to kids my age, to let them know that, you know what, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can share the good news also with other people. And I also, I'm now ministering the word at the age of 24, about to finish bachelor's degree. I've came a long way also, and if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have been here. If it wasn't for people who loved me and encouraged me in the things of God, I wouldn't have been able to stay strong, especially serving him in these days. We haven't seen a lot of young people having that drive, having that, that um, compassion or that zeal for God's kingdom. But as Mary's ministry leaders... We're going to try our best to reach those lost souls and to reach out to others because 
I just have to thank God that he reached out to me. Even when I gave up on him, he didn't give up on me. Mm -hmm. And there were people who didn't give up on me either. Amen. Brandon, yeah. Amen. tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, my journey came off um, a little bit uh, like many others out there. And it's good. What makes evangelism so special, um, as Miss Graham had mentioned, is if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Mm -hmm. And and still, there there's some people, uh, they will say, but that is you. I don't think God will do that for me. I, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I don't believe, they don't believe that God can mm -hmm. do that for them. Mm -hmm. And so when you're that message of hope, like Aaron and Graham is saying, you know, that person will then realize that, you know what, this is possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. And it is possible indeed. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. On my end, I, uh, I I can tap into another era. For me, it was alcohol and woman mm -hmm. and also um, that feeling of abandonment because at various times in my life, uh, my father wasn't present, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so like many men out there today, that lack of that father figure and many men would probably ignorant to the fact that they don't need a dad mm -hmm. and the guidance mm -hmm. of a dad wasn't necessarily important because my mom was there but they are actually effects that spurs down in a home mm -hmm. when the father is missing mm -hmm. the woman can do so much mm -hmm. but only so much but only so much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when that father element is not there you know, it does cause a little bit of mishap mm -hmm. because he brings a lot of discipline. That is one of his job mm -hmm. to bring discipline mm -hmm. in the home. Mm -hmm. The woman, they bring the love and the nurturing, but a man, they should bring discipline in a home. And when it's a woman's job to also do the discipline part, mm -hmm. it's kind of very difficult mm -hmm to mix the nurturing and discipline which is very important and a lot of women do that very well today i can say that for sure mm -hmm. right but when the man is missing a whole lot is missing from that home mm -hmm. amen we're not saying that a uh, home can't survive without it you know they have many that has but it's a very important element of a home mm -hmm. and more importantly of a family mm -hmm. and so for me I, I i didn't have my dad and so i didn't have that guidance per se until later on in my life um when i started to live with my grandfather mm -hmm. then i started to have a different level of guidance and so forth and that has really guided me to where i am today mm -hmm. but speaking about where i fell off um into drugs and into i, I try cocaine i try um weed uh, everybody tries weed you know i've been living off weed for a while and cocaine alcohol uh, especially in the time of college, mm -hmm. you know, in my um, first year and second year, it was a mess, right? And it was a blur mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it was, it wasn't such a pleasing life because, you know, you go out with friends, you have fun and at the end of the night, you're left with nothing, you know, you're left with no money, uh, no hope, um, you're left with nothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you go through the week with a drag because you already have no money. <laughs> so how are you going to get to work? How are you going to eat? How are you going to survive? Mm -hmm. And then you feel different than others that has that money mm -hmm. to even eat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're at the cafeteria at work and you're eating a biscuit, you know, a can can and an ideal while somebody's having a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. You I know, know. And it, it, the, I understand. the repercussions of your decision, mm -hmm. right? And so some, the, the, the problem is that sometimes we only think about that quick fix, mm -hmm. but God is that permanent fix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that is a very important message for many people out there today that we're seeking temporary happiness mm -hmm. when only God can fill that void mm -hmm. to give us that permanent happiness mm -hmm. because God love is true. Mm -hmm. The love that we get out there may not be as genuine and as true as God's love. Mm -hmm. And for me, evangelism is an act of God's love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's God's love flowing through you and reaching to the hearts out there mm -hmm. of those who need God's love. And on the second part, evangelism, it has to involve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Because the Holy Spirit, as you approach someone, it it's going to allow you to understand so much about that person, even without that person speaking. Mm -hmm. What I mean about that is, like, there was this person I met just in this week. And then the first thing I tell them after I shake their hand, and it, it was meant to be that we would have spoke about life. And the first thing I tell that person, my gosh, you look like a person that has come a long way. And they're like, yes, yes, I have. I, I have come a long way. And I said, yeah, you didn't pop up from nowhere. You know, you weren't born yesterday. You're st you look so strong, but I know there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. And that was the foundation okay. of our whole conversation. Okay. And as time would go, as we we're continuing to speak, I get to learn that they have been through abuse. They have been through rejection. They have done like ex extra years in high school because of different things that had happened in their life. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I said, my gosh, it is true. That means when um, that, that, that promptness that came to me to tell you that mm -hmm. you have come a long way, it meant something. To him. To him, mm -hmm. right? And they say, yeah, yeah, that's true. And th it, it was a perfect foundation for us to encourage each other mm -hmm. and motivate each other mm -hmm. and share once again that love. Yeah, well, I, I think um, my my way of evangelizing is basically um, right here on Moments of Inspiration. Um, I let people understand that I am a Christian, but um, the inspiration that I try to provide is for people to believe in other than the human being. Yes, you know? yes. Um, and, and, and go in that direction. I know when I was your age and Aaron's age and <laughs> may maybe <laughs> Miss Betty's age, uh, <laughs> I was a hot mess. And I know I was, you know, and and I know that I was back then. And um, it, it's a way for me to encourage younger people. Amen. You know, a lot of time young people don't like to um, do what you say yeah. uh -huh. because they don't think that you've been through anything they don't yeah. think that you you know you just came yeah. straight like you said to the, you mm -hmm. weren't just born yesterday uh -huh. i just let people know i wasn't just born yesterday i came yes. to belize 25 years ago yes. but then i'm 72 now so i, I lived a full life yeah. before i even came here yeah. and yes. um the way that i am perceived now is the way that I want people to perceive me. Yeah. You yes. understand? Yes. Um, yes. And and because I like to set the example as I live rather than um, like Sister Betty, she's equipped. Mm -hmm. You know, I told somebody I wasn't equipped to give a message, and they said, "No, you you can't say that you're not equipped because God will equip you for what He wants you to do." Amen. So um, I just sit, I wait you know for that time to come yeah because i know that it will come but then mm -hmm. how do i express or how do i uh, interact with people mm -hmm. that don't really know me or, or feel threatened to come to me you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. and um so i'm learning i'm still a, a work in progress yes, you know yes. also you know and i think all of us no matter amen. where you are aaron made a good amen. statement the, amen yeah aaron mm -hmm. made a very good yes. statement about um mm -hmm. you know coming in, coming to be on the level yes. yeah of yes. who you're talking to yes. yeah right. you know if a person feels mm -hmm. that i'm going to come into your house with my bible and i'm going to sit and i'm going to say where's your bible and then you're not going to say i well i don't have one mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know and then you start quoting yes. scriptures without doing the relation between yes. the scripture and who this person is because you didn't really take the time to don't know understand. who the person was yeah okay. and so what, what Aaron is saying you know that it's good to know the person that's right or Very find out yes, find out right. something yes. about that person right there is that right sister betty that's right that's right you get to know who the person is you mm -hmm. know Amen. and you know in my my work that i had done as a nurse i did prenatal care and many of the women you know they would come in and they would talk with me and i take that time to listen to them because they are hurting they are abused they're living in abusive relationships you know all these things and i get the chance to minister to these women these women are hurting they need to hear that there is someone 
who love them, who care about them, you know, and will give them a hope. And you are the one, if I am the one to help them to reach that place. I did it when I was working mm -hmm. as a as a rural health nurse at Integral Health Center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so I thank God because I, I right now I am my, I'm available. I'm making myself available for God to use me to reach people because there are so much hurting people right now in our nation in mm -hmm. Belize City. Exactly, exactly. You know, being an evangelist is very, it's a very amazing thing, especially when you know that you're making a difference in someone's life just by speaking to them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians feel that um, you have to be in the office of an evangelist to evangelize, mm -hmm. but that's not true. Um, Louis Pala believes, and he said that evangelism is not an option mm -hmm. for the Christian life. So each, of one, each one of us, are destined and are called to be witnesses of Christ mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to reach those lost souls. 99% of all believers believe that it is their right to go out and speak to people mm -hmm. and evangelize. But according to statistics, 80% does not do that. That means only 19% is doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happens to the remaining 80%? Their mm -hmm. confidence. Yes. They, you know, um, you can be a believer and you can know how you feel. I know yes. how I feel about mm -hmm. being a Christian. Yes. But then mm -hmm. when you come to me to evangelize, mm -hmm. then am I going to relate to what you're saying to me? That's true. Yes. You know? That's true. And, and it's so important, yes. I feel. Uh, let me give you an example. When I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we did evangelism in the area of Victoria Street. Uh -huh. And so I walked up to this brother and I say, hey, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? You know, and, and it was just talking. And I said, why are you just standing here like this in front of this store, you know, hanging out? you know sunday morning yeah <laughs> so he said well you know he doesn't really live on this side of the street on the side of town mm -hmm. i said oh, okay then so what you doing over here you know i'm just i don't know being my inquisitive self yes, uh, yes i have people yes. that call me nosy but you know i'm mm -hmm. still trying to get him to give me some type of conversation yes well yes. he was on that side of town because he went to see his baby and nice. I said, oh, okay, so his baby and the baby's mother, okay, lived around the Victoria Street area. Mm -hmm. But he was there because he wanted to see his baby. However, he and the mother are not getting along. Wow. So he wasn't able. So I had to tell him about my story. Yes, yes, you know? yes. You know, to let him know. You know, you got the, um, you and, 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 and the baby's mother need to get it together. Yeah. You don't have to live with her to be a good father. Hmm. You know, and so we went on to that type of conversation. So we went around the neighborhood and came back. And on the way back into the church, he stopped me mm -hmm. and said that he was going to, you know, do better. Yes. And, yes. and he has a Bible and he's going to start reading it. You know, oh, yeah. and and so that made me feel that I had accomplished something for that day because Glory that one person said, "I'm gonna try, I'm gonna yes. try." Yeah. Yeah. So, um, evangelizing um, in a group is one thing, but one on one, when you mm -hmm. talk to a person and you get them to understand, hey. I'm in the same shoes you are. Yes. I yes. walk the same path you have walked. Uh huh. I need the same kind of healing you need. Yep. But I believe that I'm going to get that healing. Amen. You understand? So Amen. once you say to God and to yourself mm -hmm. and to the people, Sweet. you know, Amen. that you Very believe important. that you're a believer. Amen. Very and important. And you feel it in your spirit, Amen. in your heart. Amen. Because Amen. that's what it's all about. Amen. Then you, 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 tend to live mm -hmm. a different way of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I'm so um, grateful mm -hmm. that um, the last two uh, guests that we had 
on yes. on moments of inspiration yes, were yes. people that talked about peace and calm mm -hmm. and, meditation. and meditation and what yoga is all about and spirituality because um, as he was saying, uh, Jeremy was on uh, WB the other day and he was saying that meditation does not take away from your devotion time that's or right. your prayer time. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to spend that alone time mm -hmm. with God. So spend, and, you, and you need to spend time, you know, and just not a little 10 minutes is okay. But if you can go longer, it would be good, mm -hmm. you know. But 10 minutes is good enough for to start, to mm -hmm. make a start that at that time with God yes. that time is very important to take time out for God Amen. He, did so it, he did it for you and he did it for all of us yes. well I'm going to be truthful about the um, the time span mm -hmm. you know um, we have a mandate mm -hmm. um, within the the service, our, our church, to pray for one hour. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And even though I'm a prayerful person, I believe in prayer, I don't think that I can pray for one continuous hour. I told Sister Betty, you know, I really don't feel that I can pray. But then now that I am trying to do it, yes, yes. I'm doing it. Amen. You know, um, I didn't feel... I didn't feel that I was going to be able to, but now I am. Mm -hmm. But I didn't start out with 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, Brother Enriquez was saying, start with two. Yeah. <laughs> so I started with the two minutes, you know, to see, do the breathing, you yeah. know, and, and um, it works. Amen. You know, um, it, it leaves your mind to be more focused yes. on, on and centered on what yeah. you are are doing at that time at that time, at that time and mm -hmm. what you want done at that time so we're not thinking and talking about the past and we do pray for the future yeah. right. but for the right now right. what what is it that we're doing right now so and when you uh when you go into your uh meditation mm -hmm. mode mm -hmm. then that's the time and it doesn't necessarily that's have to be that's your your quiet place your quiet time that that you you do it um your meditation your devotion and so on absolutely i agree i mean you can't just get up and do 100 push-ups one day <laughs> you gotta <laughs> take time work your, work your way up yeah to it. i'm still not there right it but it takes you know, time to go because with you amen. know with practice yes you start where you, you think you can get what you can do mm -hmm. and then then gradually gradually the time will increase mm -hmm. yeah. along the way amen amen yes. it helps you to engage a lot more with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Which is very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible says those who are led by the Holy Spirit are called children of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. Amen. The leading of the Holy Spirit is very Amen. important. It, it causes you to make different decisions. It causes you to become more discerned. You know, um, and to see things differently. And to allow the love of God to manifest in you. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking about evangelism, um, for me, very importantly, um, the the process is very important. And from my from my in my eyes, the process is to love God, and then to love others, liberate others, mm -hmm. lead others, mm -hmm. and launch. Launch means to push them. Yes, push them to do something in the mm -hmm. in their life in terms of um mm -hmm. towards god you know encouraging them to um hey uh, can you sing hey can you can you fix right can right. you you know mm -hmm. allow them to engage and to even also spread the word of god yes and so that they can evangelize too yes. Yes. um so that we can all together continue to spread the word for those mm -hmm. who haven't heard mm -hmm. i wanted to mention something on what miss echoes said earlier you yes. were talking about the individual story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, John McCarthy, MacArthur, sorry, once said that one thing he have noticed or observed in all his years of ministry 
is that most effective and important aspects of evangelism usually take place on an individual personal level mm -hmm. yes. most people yes. do not come to christ as an immediate response <coughs> yes. to a sermon mm. they hear on a crowded yes. setting yes. Mm -hmm. yeah yes. they come to christ because of the individual the influence of an individual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i've learned that over the centuries god has used men and women to share the good news well-known evangelists like dl moody mm -hmm. john wesley and billy graham mm -hmm. and um he have made eva they, these people have made evangelism their life yes. and yes, yes they were like billy graham who had thousands of people following him going to his church yes. and there is some who actually had one person that they influenced so whatever level you're on just know that evangelism evangelizing is very important mm -hmm. even reaching one soul it's very important like isaiah 52 7 said that how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news and that's what evangelists do bring good, good news. news right 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 you know you mentioned um uh, billy graham mm -hmm. and um he's a perfect example yes, yes. of yes. um a person that can fall back yes and even though he had all his followers and he was a man of god Wow. You know, sometimes you take a step back. So yeah. true. And when that happens and yeah. you actually do believe in, in God mm -hmm. and, and prayer and um, then you can get back on your feet. Amen. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not to say that because you're a Christian and you're an evangelist mm -hmm. or an apostle or pastor, or, you know, whatever, yes. um, like Aaron was saying those are titles yeah you know yes, and yes, she doesn't yes. like to be you know and I, I think that's wonderful yes. because really um, once you put a label on somebody yes. they try to meet that label yeah the entire mm -hmm. the, the rest of their life mm -hmm. rather than just being who they are yes. okay mm -hmm. we talked about uh, feeling the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit are yes. love yes. joy peace, peace patience peace. kindness mm -hmm. goodness mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. faithfulness gentleness mm. and self-control now if you and and we from i think it was from what date was this from july every week i went through what uh fruit of the spirit that we would focus on yes. and um to me that's a way for people to um uh, understand what the spirit will do for them amen and if amen. you are let's say for instance um patience i have a tendency to be very impatient mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess you all know that by now huh? hey. <laughs> so um i have a tendency to be impatient mm -hmm. but then that week that we were going through the spirit of patience mm -hmm. then i prayed you know god let me have this bed show me you know mm -hmm. where i need to have patience and immediately things started to happen to me yeah where yes. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of um going off about a situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would be more calm and i would present it differently yeah um as a as an action rather than a reaction yes, mm -hmm. yes. is is and the, the action was being calm and being patient with other people okay. not putting my expectations and that's what usually happens um you put your expectations on somebody else mm -hmm. and if they don't meet your expectation then you get frustrated and confused and you know you mm -hmm. just get out of it mm -hmm. and um you have to learn uh, i had to learn how to uh, be more patient and calm with people when they do things that doesn't appear like they would do it as i would do it Yes, but yes. in order to get them to do it, I had to be patient. Yeah. I had to be patient to li li make them understand where I was coming from. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sometimes people don't understand what you're saying, and I will say to them, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! Make me understand what you're talking about." Yeah, you know. So there, there's a lot of ways that that you can, in kindness, huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you have to be kind to people. Yeah, you know, you can't always walk around with a tuned up face and have a negative every time someone says something to you no 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 it's this way or no 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 it's that way
have a few announcements I'd like to make before we go back into our conversation and any more music and let us not forget this morning at 1030 to tune into Sunday Review where Yaya Marin Coleman and Bill Lindo's special guest is Dwight Neal a consultant and uh, tune in at 1030 as they make sense of the news on November the 14th through the 18th uh, an AME Church mission is coming to uh, Belize once again, and they're going to do an annual. They did last year, and every year that this particular team comes, they would do a health fair. And the health fair will be on the 16th of November at the um, Northern Fisherman's parking lot. Also in January, we have a team uh, coming that is going to be doing some uh, renovations at the at Auntie's place. Um, Auntie's Place is a home for women that is being established by the Maddie Roeder Women's Outreach Organization. In February, um, it of course, is Black History Month. And what we're planning for, and when I say we, I'm talking about moments of inspiration because moments of inspiration spearheads most of this and our partners with the different um, groups that come in. Um, and the moments of inspiration is um, a mission in the 16th Episcopal District for the AME Church. Uh, February is Black History Month, and we have in country um, an author of the book, um, Handbook of Gospel Music, the Handbook of Gospel and uh, Music, and his name is Charles Clancy. He lives in Corzal, and Charles Clancy has agreed to facilitate a workshop on gospel music. And then also we have in country a pastor that I've been talking to to um, work with us during that time period because he will be able to tell you the history of the of Africa and how it relates to Christianity and where it comes in okay and then in March I am very proud to say that auntie's place will have its grand opening March is women's month and during women's month we have our annual uh, fundraiser and also the opening of the home for women. So we, uh, Moments of Inspiration has a lot on their plate for the next couple of months. And I just pray that God would be with us and give us strength to carry on. Yes. Okay. So um, 
let's get back to our conversation. Um, Sister Betty and um, Aaron, when, uh, when we talk about um, evangelizing and we say we go out or you, mm-hmm. you, you speak to a person one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And um, I like to use that, uh, the one-on-one, as an example mm-hmm. because how you carry yourself and how mm-hmm. people see you is a means of evangelism in itself. Yes, yes. Okay, so what do you think? Yes, that is, that is so true because the life that you live that's the same life that you got to preach. Mm-hmm. You have to preach it too, mm-hmm. you know. And when you go and evangelize, yeah. people look to you. Yes, you might not have to identify yourself yes. as an evangelist as per se. Right. But you go out and you get to know that person. You get to know, get to know that individual, mm-hmm. who they are. And, and, you know, and they start revealing things to you. The more they get to trust you, the more they will pour out. And you just listen to them. Let them talk. When they finish speaking, then you can tell them. You can tell them about the hope. Where they can get hope. Where they can get healing. Where they can get deliverance. You know, if they are on love, you can. Okay, I think we have a caller on the line. Okay. Hey, good day. Hello, Hello caller there? Oh, I think the call was lost. Oh, okay. okay. That's right. All right, when they call back. Yeah. Okay, just yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, sister. Yes, because sometimes they are on love. All that, you, you know, you, you can tell them reassure them and what you picked up during their conversation and and you know and give them that hope that there is hope they are not alone you know that Jesus Christ can fill that gap because he died for all all that what is what they are going through he can fill the void for them for them amen Okay, and um, Aaron, did you want to add on to that at all? Um, I just agree with what Evangelist said, that we must walk the walk and not only talk the talk because people do listen to us, but they also hold us accountable of our actions. So we must be doers also of what we preach, not only speak about what we, we believe okay. that people should know. All right, yes, go ahead. Yes, call your life. Yes. yes. Okay. And um, this morning, I just want to continue to encourage Brandon and Erin and Sister Betty. I see you all, you guys, all of you, as the laborers in the vineyard. Amen. Well, Amen. 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 You know? And Sister Betty, yes, sir. I hey. know for sure oh, yes. that your testimony is a testimony. Oh. Made Amen. from God. Yes. Help people. I remember when you had that stroke and thing. I couldn't get my text there. Yes, yes. And yes. I still continue to receive my text. But Sister Betty, we know that the devil is a liar. He tried Amen. to shut Amen. you up. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. And this is Celia. I hey. know. I know. Hey. I, I recognize the voice. Hey. All right, Sister Betty. And we know that Mary's ministry is doing uh, the work of God in that area. Amen. And we know they say that prophet is never an eye in your own area. But yes, regardless yes, of yes. that, you know, people who are here and you all make the difference over there. Mm-hmm. You know, Pastor Sue, all you guys, man. God bless you, man. And I have continued to pray that God continue to anoint you all as you give forth the word and Lord's Betty. Thanks for your text there sometimes. Because sometimes they text they come. Sometimes they pile up on me and I can't read there, you know. But when they <laughs> think I run right back to my phone. Yes. Hey. So I just want to give you all thanks and praise yes. that God is using you guys. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 You Thanks a lot. God, God bless. bless you too. Amen. Amen. See, it's so amazing that we can actually be making a difference in someone's, someone's life. Yes, yes. Just by checking up on them, sending them messages, asking them how their day is going, and just being kind. People watch us, like I mentioned earlier, that it's not by what we say, but it's by what we do and how we live our life. We yeah. are the examples. Absolutely. You see, you know, and I, and I don't know, but I send her. There's those text messages. Whenever I get devotions in my phone, I just don't leave it for myself. I share it with some of my contacts in my phone. You know, and I don't know what those texts are doing, but she's saying that it does make a difference. So okay. I give God the glory for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I receive uh, different messages mm -hmm. also. And um, when when I receive them, I share them as I feel. You know, mm -hmm. like if the message mm -hmm. did something for me, yes. then it's going to do something perhaps for somebody that I know. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? You know different people's situations. So when I get those messages, I send them to people that I feel uh, would help them, would help their the healing process that they're going through. Or, or just give them some type of hope, like you say, yes. and encouragement. Um, I use those for encouragement through the day. Uh, whatever the scripture is or whatever uh, we have to do with, uh, well, not only the scriptures um, in those devotions, but, you know, just to say good morning to someone, so you know, that, that just makes them feel that good. Yes. Um, someone sent me something with this beautiful bouquet of flowers wow. and it just said, good morning. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And, um, so I sent that to some, pe a lot of people mm -hmm. that I don't have a really, um, I have a close connection with them, but then I don't see them all the time. You see? So since I don't see them all the time, I would send this to them, you know, mm -hmm. and then I would get a response. So I know that people are paying attention. And, mm -hmm. of course, uh, we yes. encourage people to go to the uh, Facebook page, yes. Moments of Inspiration yes. Facebook page, yes. and, mm -hmm. and be able to hear our uh, programs after, right? Because Brandon being our technician now, um, we uh, are on uh, a regular mm -hmm. regimen of making sure that the show, that the programming is available yes. because we, that's what we want. We want to be available other than Sunday morning, 6 yeah. to 8. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know on Sunday morning from 6 to 8, <laughs> um, people are either preparing for church, um, recovering from last night. <laughs> Uh, you know, so there's so many different things that people do on Sunday morning. Some some may still be having their last dream. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, but then they, now that they know that they can go on Facebook and yes. hear what they may have missed, yep. we can still be encouraging and inspiring to and them. And YouTube. Yes. And, and YouTube. YouTube. Yep. And YouTube. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have been praying for over two years, wow. maybe, for a technician that could help me with it's social media. Idea. And, you know, to God be the glory, Brandon. Brandon. Amen, amen, yeah. amen. Because yeah. uh, uh, Brandon, after, I mean, I had asked him uh, quite some time ago. And then one day he just came to me and said, yes, yes. you know, I think I want to try to learn how to do that. I said, real? And, and he said, real. So he's doing it. And, and now when I um, have to travel or go out of the country, uh, Moments of Inspiration will still be live. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because um, I know sometimes they put on um, the overnight tapes. Mm -hmm. And when they put on the overnight tapes, there's no conversation. There's nothing yeah. really being said, you know. Yes, and yes. Um, But I, th what I feel about Moments of Inspiration is uh, what I say in the morning, get lost in the music. I love get music, and music message. music is what it will attract me. Yeah. Okay, get found in the message. That's the words that are in the uh, the song, right? Yes, yeah. And then not only that, but then we have different people that come in and different, you know, things that we talk mm -hmm. about, different messages that are um, 
recorded messages that I play Amen. that have something to do with what's going on in Belize. And that's what I really want to inspire people yes, to, yes. to listen to the message and then get up with God. To Amen. me, that is major. Yes. Sunday morning, 6 o'clock, is the first program on CRIM for the week. Amen. And so the inspirational part of it, uh, I am uh, praying and hoping that people are inspired to go through their week with hope and trust and love. So that, that that's my little evangelistic <laughs> Amen. For, for this morning. Um, yeah, go ahead. Powerful. Uh, uh -huh. Brandon, you wanted to say something? I, I totally agree. And, uh, you know, I love that team. You know, from the first time I ever heard that team, mm -hmm. get lost in the music, get found in the message, get, get up, up with God. Yeah. Someone asked me one time, what do you mean get up with God? I said, well, <laughs> the thing is, is that when you wake up first thing in the morning on Sunday, you're getting up with God. Yes. And then I said, uh, and then you know the song, um, I think it's by Cool in the Game. Get up on it. Yeah. <laughs> get up on yeah. it. So, you know, get up with God. So, you know, yeah, you got to yeah. get up with him in order to, you know, be mindful. Uh -huh. You know, like... Um, Enrique, my brother Enriquez was saying, yeah. you know, the mindfulness, yes, you know, yes, put it yes. on your mind. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it, it, um, it works. It works. Amen. Yeah, it does. Okay. So, um, Aaron, is there anything that you wanted to bring up again, uh, as far as evangelism or yourself or something mm -hmm. that you might want to say to the audience? About evangelism. Mm -hmm. It's the great commission for us to do so. Mm -hmm. As God's word said in Matthew 28, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So God is with us, and he has commissioned us to go and evangelize. To go out, no matter how difficult it seems, no matter how mm -hmm. unapproachable people may be at times, you go, go and do what God has commissioned you to do. Be obedient to His will, and even speaking about that, I believe this afternoon we are to be going, going out evangelizing to evangelize. In and the it area. doesn't have to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. You, everyone, is called to go out and evangelize. To share the good news message of Jesus Christ and the salvation and salvation. And, and also in addition to what Aaron was mentioning earlier, um, the Bible says in Proverbs 11.30 that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. Amen. So it's a wise Amen. thing to do because God has called us to do that with his great commission amen and god doesn't want any of his people to perish right um in the second peter 3 9 he said that he is not willing that any should perish mm -hmm. but all should come to repentance mm -hmm. so it's very important it's the way how god mm -hmm. is going to get his word to everyone who haven't heard mm -hmm. so then it's not just us going to someone and saying, um, are you saved? Do you have, you know, none of that no, is, no, no, it's, no, it's no, not no. about that. No, no. It's not okay. all about it's that. It's not all it's about, not about that. All about yes, that. Yes. Okay. That's right. It's about, tell me what it's about. I believe it's about the perfect but, but, love. Yes. If God loves you, you will have that love no, to yes. want to see others being changed. You yes. want to see others come into Christ and experience what you have experienced. Like was mentioned earlier that what God made happen for you, you want to see happen for other people. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you just don't, just go and say that if, if you are saved. No, because that will turn off people. You, you yeah. have to know how to go. As I said, you have to go with that. Use wisdom when you're doing it. You, you know, yes, go yes. in love. Mm -hmm. Love. Amen. And repentance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. let's, let's, let's elaborate um, a little bit because we, Very it's Very important. Seven, Tell us, tell me a little bit about repentance. It's, you, a, uh -huh. it's a very important thing to do because the Bible says that all have sinned mm -hmm. and sure. fall short of the glory of God. And so I, I never stand to say I'm perfect, mm -hmm. right? And that I have everything made. Uh, it's an everyday 
working in progress. Um, mm-hmm. I have a shirt actually that says I'm not perfect, and then at the back I say, but I'm original, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, we're none of us are perfect, and all of us will fall short of the glory mm-hmm. of God. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is that um, the Bible says those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so God wants us to come to that point that we can call on his name so that we can be saved. And repentance is very important at the end of evangelism if you are prompt to do it. I I don't do it every time, right? Because it might not be the setting, but it's very important that if you are prompt to do it by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. then you ask the person, um, have you ever received the Lord in your heart? You know, And then you lead them to the salvation prayer. Because the truth is that we can die at any moment. And we are responsible, you know, to give that person the word of life Mm -hmm. and to lead them to Christ. That is our, remember the Bible says that it it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. And I learned the salvation prayer at Murray's ministry. You know, they had always told me it all my life, but that's where I learned it. (laughs) Um, Aaron, um, Aaron was the first one that told me a salvation prayer. You know that repentance is very important, as Brandon said, because um, God wants us to be in his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Um, Righteousness doesn't come from us. It comes from him. And righteousness, in short, means right in right standing with God. And repentance is actually turning away from that sin because a lot of people can repeat the sinner's prayer. You can do it a million times, but go back to your same old self, go back to your same old ways. But God wants us to turn, realize that we are sinners Mm -hmm. and we are saved by grace. Um, For the wages of sin is death, like mentioned by Brenda. But we are going to turn from what we used to do that displeased God Mm -hmm. to what we know will please God. So we must teach upon that repentance, having that pure heart to change Mm -hmm. our ways. Mm -hmm that does not please God so when a person repents Mm -hmm. okay they're basically asking God for forgiveness Amen. okay and at the end of every show and now Mm -hmm. when I um, do prayers openly in public yeah I usually say father forgive us for all that is past yes and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name okay and that to me is saying Father, forgive me for all that I've done in, in the yes. past. Amen. Okay, and that right there is your repentance. Yes, yes, yes. that okay. is a prayer of repentance. Okay, so then once you have um, realized and mm. that you need to do or ask for forgiveness, mm-hmm. and then you mean it in your heart, like Sister Betty saying, yeah. you got to me- mean it in your heart. It, it and has once to you, be a heart thing. Right, and once you mean it in your heart, then that's when it, 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 it comes to light, yes. you know, and the light is where you're going. Amen. Yes, yes. So, true. so go ahead, Erin, uh, you were saying something else about repentance? I just wanted to, um, to elaborate a little bit about evangelism. Um, evangelism is not salesmanship. It's not urging people, cursing them, coercing them, overwhelming them, or subduing them evangelism is basically telling a message and there was this lady who actually came out with the pocket um the pocket bible which was actually on the the new testament and over 110 million people receive a pocket sized gospel and in 1893 helen cadbury understood how powerful sharing the good news could be so much that she organized a group of ladies to sew pockets onto their dresses and carry copies of the New Testament in order to share the good news. So you must have that passion to do what God has called you to do, no matter how hard it is, how difficult it is. Um, just starting there with the love because people, they need it. They need to hear this message. So just like Helen Cadbury, we're commissioned as evangelists. Not walking in the post of evangelists, mm-hmm. but as Christians to share those good news. That's right. The good and news, uh-huh. the message of <coughs> forgiveness. You know, because you 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 need that forgiveness. There is, you said, and it's said here that you don't have you don't have no special prayer. You have to pray 
to earn forgiveness from God. All you do is ask him to forgive you through Jesus Christ and believe that you will be forgiven. And you know, one thing that um, has come up um, often is the, the fact that um, because you went to church, mm -hmm. because you were in school and you basically had to go, yeah. when you become um, 17, 18 and you graduate, mm -hmm. Amen. then you don't go anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then when you go out evangelizing and you ask people about, uh, do they believe? Oh yeah, I go to church. <laughs> I try to make it every Sunday or I go every Christmas and Mother's Day and you know so th there's um, that religion and organized religion is not saying that you're a Christian yes. okay right. Christian is Christianity is a way of life yes and uh, going to church every Sunday is something that you religiously do okay and you follow that uh, doctrine because you believe in that doctrine. I follow the doctrine of the AME church, right? But then um, that does not make me a Christian. Yeah, the true. thing that makes me a Christian is that I believe in the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. And I believe in the church universal, yeah. okay? And I believe that, that God um, is the creator. Amen. Okay, so, and then I've tried to follow the life Amen. that God would want me to follow. Yes. 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 And that to me is, is a difference and, and really has to be lifted so that young people and older people yeah. understand that just because you go to church every Sunday does not make you a Christian. That's true. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, to be a good Christian, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it, it starts you, when you're in fellowship with like minds, yes. then that's your start. Yeah. So I know that one of the things that you're really not supposed to do yeah. when you're evangelizing mm -hmm. is invite people to come to your church. That's right. But right here and right now, mm -hmm. I'm inviting people to join us mm -hmm. and service in yes. Praise Ministry on Victoria Street. Yeah, on number Sunday six, mornings, Victoria number six, Street. Victoria Street mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday mornings at 1030. Yes. And on the last Sunday of every month, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite Sundays, mm -hmm. is when the youth take over the entire service. Yeah. I mean, you have someone that will preach, uh, give the word. Yes. You have yes. someone, um, they sing, they do the, the, the praise ministry, they, they do all of that. And it's I loaded. think it's, it's inspiring for me to see them yeah. do it, you know, Amen. and to under, being around them more, I'm understanding that they know what they're talking about. Amen. They're not just because Brandon said do this and because Aaron said do that or because Sister Betty said do it this way, yes. that that's the way that they're doing it because mm -hmm. they they were told to do it yeah. rather than really understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, when you understand something, it's in your heart. Yeah. It stays in your heart. And when it's in your heart, it's in your spirit. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Um, one, one thing, you know, you know, you have many people who, come to you and say that I am a good person mm -hmm. I do this and I do that that's okay but no one is good enough to please God even the best of us you know mm -hmm. Jesus is the only way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you you cannot do anything to earn God's favor mm -hmm. Christ died for all of us mm -hmm. amen Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So um, I think what we'll do right now, Brandon, is go back to one tune and then we'll uh, close out for the day. Absolutely. Go Giving God my very life. Now that's total praise.
we just want to thank God for this day and all the blessings that he's brought our way, and we praise him and we glorify his holy name. We will now close out in prayer. We want to lift the names of Mr. Baldwin. We're going to pray for Apostle Suzette Mosiah and Marais Ministry. We want to lift the name of um, Carol Stewart, uh, Sydney Lightburn. Um, mm -hmm. We want to say good morning to Charles Clancy, Charles Clancy and his wife, and um, anybody that is in sound of our voice. We're going to have prayers lifted by Sister Betty and uh, Aaron. Father God, we come before your throne right now, Father God. Father God, and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, Father God, because you deserve all the praise. Lord God, and we say hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we lift up those names mentioned, Lord God. First of, first of all, Lord God, we lift up our apostle, Dr. Apostle Suzette Messiah, Lord God, and Mireille's ministries. Lord, and we lift up the names of the, the other mentioned names, oh Father God. Father God, and we ask you, Lord God, for strength, for healing, Father God. Lord God, for your protection, Father God. Lord God, we ask you to send your angels, your angels, Father God, to protect them, Father God, to guide them, Father God. Father God, continue, Lord God, to strengthen them, Lord God, and continue, Lord God, to use them for your glory, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, you are mighty in your way, Lord God. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor, Father God. Yes, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are going to do, Lord God. In Jesus' awesome and mighty and holy name, we pray. Amen. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, Father God, that you have done, Lord God, just as you said that you will do. You're the healing God, Lord. Yes, God. You're the protecting God. And we thank you, God, for healing the bodies of every individual on the list. And yes. We pray, God, for your healing virtue, Father God, to continue God. to rest upon them. Yes, we God. thank you, God, for the many testimonies, Lord, yes, God. that will be coming forward, Lord, and touching lives of people, God. We thank you, God, for what you have done this morning. Thank you for the great commission. Guide us, Father God, and let your Holy Spirit take full control over our lives as you guide and protect us each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen and amen. We um, also want to lift the name of uh, Vivian this morning, uh, who needs a healing. She's having some pain in her back. So we, Father God, we're lifting the name of Vivian this morning. We're praying God for a healing on her. Uh, and for her and through you father god we know that this can be done because all things are possible uh, all things are possible in god hallelujah. yes hallelujah. hallelujah okay um so we're getting ready to close out and is there anything that anybody would like to say before closing once again, I just want to invite um, everyone to um, anyone who would want to visit a church this morning. Uh, Murray's Ministry International by Apostle Suzette, Dr. Suzette Messiah, and 6 Victoria Street. And you can always feel free to do a call um, for more information and for prayer um, at 2034252. Okay. You know, that's my first time hearing the telephone number <laughs> for the church. Okay. Um, let me leave you with this. This was given to me in uh, 2012. Live without pretending. Love without depending. Listen without defending. Speak without offending. Wow. Okay, and so now to you, my listeners, I hope you know Christ. If you do, you know he is the way, the truth, and the light. If you don't know or want to get to know him better, continue to listen to Moments of Inspiration on Crim Radio, Belize City, Belize, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock a.m. And also, if you're so inspired, or if we have so inspired you, uh, invite you're invited to join our to join our Facebook page. Okay, 
in. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the people of Belize, the people of the world, and the people of God say, Amen. amen. And amen. I don't mind though. I'm glad to be free. You know what I'm saying?